We're rolling. Overview of the Bible, Galatians. So we're in the book of Galatians. We're in chapter 2, and Paul has been talking about, uh, he's really emphasizing his gospel of grace, that it's through faith. Uh, you, you know, you believe this grace of God, and, and that's what saves you, and that's what justifies you and frees you from your sins. And he's, So he's in the middle of that, and we're in chapter 2, and all of a sudden he brings up an episode where he's talking to Peter. Peter shows up in town where he's at, and Peter all of a sudden begins to withdraw from the, other gen, from the Gentiles and just kind of hangs out with the other Jews. And he's just kind of like, uh, you know, Paul all of a sudden says, hey, what are you doing? You know, we, we, we uh, tell Gentiles they can, they can live free and we don't compel ourselves. We, we ourselves don't live like Jews. We live like Gentiles. And like, now you're kind, of, you're kind of withdrawing and only associating with the, the Jews. And he says, you're, you're being a hypocrite. And so Paul's basically confronting Peter right here about it. He talks about that. And it's, it's in, in a view of uh, the gospel that he's preaching. It's a gospel of grace. It's not those who do the works of the law. It's a gospel that Jesus has completed the law for us and fulfilled it and paid the price of our sin. So it, he's done the law. He's done what we, we couldn't do. And so uh, we put our trust in him. And so he was uh, kind of rebuking Peter over the fact that it looked like Peter was kind of withdrawing, coming back to just the shadow of things, to the law, not to the fulfillment which is in Christ. And we see that in the New Testament. That's a, that's a common problem. The book of Hebrews is kind of all about that. It looks like a whole group of people, the Hebrews, the Christian Hebrews, were kind of withdrawing and coming back to the law. And so he addresses that there. So this goes on in uh, chapter 2. We go on, it says, uh, Verse 15, we are Jews by nature and not sinners from among the Gentiles. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, since by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now the emphasis here is the works of the law. You know, and, and so in, and included in that, what's happening here in the Galatian region is that some people are coming in and really pressing circumcision. They're really emphasizing that. And he's saying, by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. You know, because what happens is if we're trying to operate under the law, uh, you know, do not covet. Well, have any of you ever coveted? Honor your mother and father. Have you ever dishonored your mother and father? Do not steal. Have you ever stolen? Do not bear false witness. Have you ever lied? Well, if all of a sudden we're trying to justify ourselves by that, we've all failed. And no one is going to be justified by the works of the law. So he's preaching this, this gospel, this message that says, we're not required to fulfill the works of the law. Jesus did it. He did it. And now ours is to put faith in him. Uh, anyway, so it goes on here. It says, uh, verse 19, For through the law I died to the law that I might live to God. Through the law I died to the law. Because through the law, the law requires death as a punishment for sin. So through the law, he died to the law. Well, how did he die to the law? He died through Christ. Christ died for us. We were in Christ, in his death. So we died with him that we might be raised with him to life. So he says, I died to the law that I might live to God. In verse 20, a famous verse in chapter 2, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I have lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. So I've been crucified with Christ. That's what he's saying. By the law, I died to the law. And, but now the life that I live, I now live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered me. His, his very spirit has promised to come within us. And that's going to be the next transition he goes into in the next chapters is this, this coming of the spirit to us. In 21, it says, I do not... 221, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. You see that? If we could get righteous through doing the law, then Jesus didn't have to die. He, he'd just get out there with a whip and say, be righteous, be righteous, be righteous. He didn't have to die. He could just tell us to do better. But righteousness doesn't come through the law for us because we've already broken the law. If I've already broken a window, I, the window's broken. And if I've already broken the law, it's, it's broken. I don't, I, you know, if I broke it a little bit or a lot, it doesn't matter. It's broken, and it's supposed to be perfect. So we, we can't present perfect righteousness. Jesus did it. If we could, then Jesus didn't have to die. We could have just, you know, been really righteous and 
Jesus wouldn't have had to die. I remember sharing with somebody one time, and I said, you know, Jesus died for you. And he said, oh, he didn't have to do that. Well, he did have to do that if we're going to be saved, because he was the only perfect sacrifice that ever lived. You know, there, not only did we have to live a perfect life, but if we didn't, in the law, there had to be a perfect sacrifice. And he's the only one that could present a perfect life as a sacrifice. And so if he didn't volunteer to do it, there would be no perfect sacrifice. There would be no justification. So really, Jesus did have to die for us. Uh, some people just don't know that. Okay, so we're going on chapter 3, verse 1. You foolish Galatians. We use that a lot around here because we've got a town called Galatia. So we just can no, no. Uh, who, he says, who has bewitched you before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? That's an interesting statement. And I've kind of wondered uh, at times, what is he saying there? But I think what he's talking about is Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. And I don't know if he's just saying, I don't think he's just talking about the message, but actually probably the, his own life. He, he demonstrated the, the crucifixion of Christ in him in front of these people. He told, was showing what a crucified life looks like. Um, and he says this in verse 2, This is the only thing I want to find out from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Okay. Did you receive the Spirit? Did you, were you born again or received the Holy Spirit by not stealing, not lying, not, you know, by honoring your mother and father? It says, you know, by not killing, I didn't kill anyone and whoo, I'm born again. It says, do you receive the Spirit of God by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Hearing the message of Christ and believing it. He says, uh, verse 3, Are you so foolish, having believed by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? So you started this walk by believing, and now you're thinking, no, I just, the way I really progress is i got to just do the law. i got to get circumcised. And uh, remember, uh, he, he really came against that strongly early on, and he will again. Uh, verse 5, Does he then who provides you with the Spirit and works miracles among you do it by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Once again, are the miracles that happen among us are like, okay, I haven't stolen, I haven't killed, I haven't dishonored my parents. Boom, miracle. Well, no, it happens by hearing the word of Christ and that favor in the kingdom of God and, and believing it and watching it come to pass. And so uh, verse 6, even so Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Therefore be sure that it is those who are of the faith of faith who are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith Preach the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the nations shall be blessed in you. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with Abraham, the believer. For as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law to perform them. So if we're saying we're going to be justified by the law, you have to do them all. You know, if you say, Well, we honor the Sabbath, we don't work on Saturday, we have church on Saturday, we have to do all of this on Saturday, we're honoring the Sabbath. Well, if you're justifying yourself by that, you've got to be, you got to do all the works of the law. If that's how you're justified, then you've got to do the whole thing, and, and that's where you'll be held accountable, and no one is going to be justified by the works of the law, because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We found that out in the book of Romans. And so, that's where he leaves it here is, you know, if you're trying to be justified by the law, you're in trouble. In verse 11, he says, Now that no one is justified by the law before God is evident, for the righteous man shall live by faith. And he goes back to that passage in Habakkuk. Uh, the righteous man shall live by faith. And, and that's, you know, that's only mentioned in that one Old Testament passage, but Paul really says that is a summation of the message that Jesus brought to us. That is the message of uh, the gospel. Verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And he's basically summarizing, you know, Jesus became a curse on the tree. He paid the price for our sin. And it's by that sacrifice that both Jew and Gentile become, are justified by faith. Both Jew and Gentile receive the Spirit through faith, and both Jew and Gentile come into the inheritance of Abraham's promise, and that promise is by faith. 